anything. Mike, this is Hondo Carpenter. I was talking to Butch Jones tonight after you made the pick, and he talked about this as a lot like Colton Miller. He's explosive. He went under the radar. Great leadership. Thought he's a pick-and-play guy, but also offers versatility. Can you kind of expand on what Butch was saying, please? Yeah, we did a lot of homework on this pick. Uh, knew it would be controversial. Completely understand that. But I think what we're most excited about is we kind of feel like this uh, offensive line of ours uh, could develop into one one of the younger, more exciting offensive lines in the league. And, you know, we held on to Richie Incognito and Denzel, and that's awesome. They're going to help our young guys. But left side, he played right guard. Uh, he can bend. He's a power guy. He fits our offense. I mean, let's face it, we want to run the football with Josh Jacobs. We're going to throw it a lot, too, obviously, but we like running the football. We want to be a power football team. This guy's going to help us do that. Uh, as far as his versatility, uh, he can play inside and outside, but he's going to start at right tackle for us day one, and uh, we're going to see if he can hold on to that job. Mike, um, were there any discussions about trading down? Obviously, uh, everybody's board is is different. Um, uh, but were there some chances to maybe tra trade down and pick Alex up uh, later on in the draft in the 20s or so? Yeah, there were a lot of conversations about it. Um, I thought a couple things might happen that did not happen that I was totally open for. Uh, when we got just when we were getting on the clock, a team did call us and inquired about moving up, but they gave us a very poor trade offer and it was a team that needed a tackle so uh, the combination of the poor offer and their need kind of pushed us away from that but yeah there were a lot of conversations about it and you know there's a risk reward scenario and in this case we didn't feel like it was worth it Mike obviously the problems you guys had on defense last year pretty well documented what um the decision not to not to go defense and round one was that a difficult one for you guys or was tackle sort of the spot you wanted to hit in all honesty, he was the highest rated player on our board at that time, offense or defense. So um, we need to get a lot better on defense. We recognize that. We hope to get a lot better this weekend. Uh, we got three picks tomorrow. We're excited about each and every one of them. So, again, I, I'm, I'm hoping that the board comes to us and, uh, and that we, play, we can take a, a real, three really good football players tomorrow. Hi, Mike. Levi Damien from USA Today. Last time we spoke, you were, you you touched on the fact that you did, you liked when players didn't opt out last season. How much did of a factor was that when uh, when considering you know Leatherwood in this draft? Well, I think the point I was trying to make about opting out really was there were a lot of individual decisions being made, right? And you couldn't really react against the player for opting out, especially when conferences were opting out on players. So we weren't really negative about players opting out whatsoever. Um, I like his pedigree. You know, I like the fact that the kid wanted to compete. Uh, he didn't need to show up at the senior bowl, but he did. Uh, he started 41 games. He's played a couple of positions. I mean, we like those kind of guys. And again, we did an awful lot of homework on this young man. You know, I spoke to Nick. Uh, at length about a bunch of his players because they were loaded, of course. Uh, but we really did a lot of homework on him. We feel like he's a great fit for what we do. And the, the opt-out thing, we do, are we happy that a guy chooses to play football when he has an opportunity? Sure. But at the end of the day, that was just a small part of it. Mike, way before you made the pick, there were reports that Aaron Rodgers won out of Green Bay and he listed or supposedly reported the Raiders as a team he'd be interested in. One, do you have any comment on that? And were there any discussions at this point with Green Bay about Aaron Rodgers? Uh, Aaron Rodgers is under contract to another team. I can't talk about him. Hey, Mike, it's Tashawn Reed from The Athletic. Uh, I know you mentioned it. Obviously, you all have seven picks remaining as it stands. How do you kind of weigh that when it comes to, you know, whether you're staying put at all those picks, you know, how you kind of navigate it, that whether it comes to trading up or down the draft board, just how do you, you weigh all that together as you're going throughout the draft? Yeah, I think you just have to see how the board plays out. Uh, you know, we're looking at tomorrow at pick uh, 48, the 16th pick of the day. Take a look, go home tonight, take a look at how 
reset the board, take a look at how it looks for tomorrow. Uh, I'll probably make some calls uh, tonight and tomorrow morning just to check out some of the teams at the top end and what they're looking for. I got a good, really good feel for what it's going to cost to go from 48 to anywhere up, up in front. And uh, I like the depth that we're looking at tomorrow, to be honest with you. I like the way our board lays out right now. Uh, there were very few surprises tonight for us. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to tomorrow. And, um, you know, you guys have seen the last couple of years, we've moved up and back uh, several times. So uh, eyes are wide open, and I hope we get a few opportunities to move around. Hey, Mike, you said you knew that the pick would be controversial. Uh, why? Excuse me, I didn't hear that. Oh, so you said you knew that a pick would be controversial? I mean, I'm, I, why do you think that? Why would it be controversial, you think? Well, I mean, when we made the pick, we had the TVs on. And, and obviously, uh, I, I I forget which group it was, but they were saying they could have had him in the second round and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I understand that. The fan base is going to listen to that, and the fan base is going to question it. I'm good, Mike. Vic just got my question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Mike, I got a question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can I just ask you, you talked a lot about the uh, the process with the pandemic and not being able to have the face-to-face -face meetings and taking them out to dinner and all that. Can you talk about that process with Alex and what impressed you, what didn't? Well, I mean, just the whole process with the, with the, with the guy. Sure. And again, the process, you're limited by what the NFL allowed us to do with players this year due to COVID. So you were limited to a maximum of five times with, with for instance, Zoom calls. Uh, we worked real hard with him on the Zoom calls that we were allowed. Um, you're, we talked on the phone to him, which is, in addition, allowed. Uh, Tom Cable, our offensive line coach, I, in all honesty, you'd have to ask Tom, but uh, this might have been Tom's favorite player in this entire class. I mean, Coach Cable has been all over him for months now since the first time he saw the tape. Coach Gruden loved this guy. Our scouts love this guy. And what I like is when the second floor in our building, which is all the coaches, and the third floor, which is all the scouts, when we're united on a conversation like Leatherwood, that makes me feel really good about the pick. Hey, Mike, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, um, there's, a, there's a couple of players uh, at a position of need, not to let any cats out of the bag. Uh, for you guys, you guys have a, a, another need, maybe at defense in the secondary. Um, and there are some interesting players that are still available at those at that position. Uh, does it do you get anxious to maybe move up to secure a guy or do you feel like, um, you know, this the way this draft is, fought, is is unfolding, you're pretty comfortable that somebody will, will be there at 48 as well? Yeah, I think there's really good depth between 33 and 48. Uh, I don't think there's a compelling need to move up, but if there's an opportunity to, that makes sense to me, I'll do it. Uh, but the bottom line right now as the board sits is I think it looks uh, – I, I think there's a, uh, a good-looking group of players but on both sides of the football. So I feel very confident that as uh, tomorrow progresses, we'll, we'll try and make the right moves. Mike, when you look at the film on Alex Leatherwood, uh, I think the best description is that he kind of plays like a bully. He's very physical. Do you think that him as that kind of player will be a fan favorite amongst Raider Nation, who's synonymous with having that type of player kind of be the face of the team? Yeah, I think a couple things, and I think that's it's fair. He is a tough guy. He's very aggressive. He's a powerful right tackle. So I think we're going to run the football better. You know, we like and, and I think we're going to get Josh Jacobs to the second level more cleanly than we did last year. Not just because of Alex, but because I think we're getting younger, more athletic. I, th I think we're going to run the football and have some fun next year. I think people are going to like Leatherwood in the run game. Secondly, I think he he's going to give us an opportunity to anchor a little bit better on the right side in the pass game. OK, allow Dirk to step up into the pocket. Uh, push some people up the field. He's got a really nice combination of length, bend, power, and athletic ability. I mean, so I, I think he's going to help enhance both the run and the pass game. 
Mike, I know last week you said uh, there were some issues getting medicals in on some players. Uh, I know there was reports this morning uh, that other teams might have got reports in just this morning and taken guys off their board. Did you have to deal with that at all? Was there anything that late that affected your thought process? I'll tell you, it's crazy. I mean, I'm literally walking into the draft room at, at about four o'clock today, and uh, I, I was sitting with Chris Cortez, our trainer, and just updating several players. And uh, it can't. And, and I'm not going to get into any players' medical because I don't think that's even allowed. But at the, it, it's a little bit disconcerting to be walking into the draft room an hour before the draft starts, and to still be getting medical updates from your trainer and your doctor. It's just. It shouldn't happen that way. It really shouldn't. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, everybody.